those who went to Mexico, we're going to hear more about the great, great things that God did in Mexico. Next Sunday, we're going to see some pictures. Thank you for all those that came last Sunday, those that work and keep the, the ship moving and going. And, and it was just an amazing, amazing thing last weekend in Mexico. We are trying to help more people who are still doing online only or come to church and feel intimidated. Listen, I don't want you to go out of church and say, Pastor now wants us all to wear a bracelet. That is not what's happening, okay? What is happening is that some people are afraid of coming to church. And so if you are here and you feel intimidated because maybe you don't want to keep kissing and hugging everybody. And so if you want to keep social distancing, from everybody, you, there is baskets out there. You want to wear one of those, take it home, hang it there in the car so you don't forget it. Maybe next Sunday we'll still have some more next Sunday. So if you want to come to church, worship God, enjoy His presence, go into the Word, and don't, you, don't, you live with people who are afraid or people who are very sick or elderly people, and you want to stay away, you can wear one of this. This, you know what it means. This is like we are living in 2018 pretty much. And this one is if you want people to talk to you still, and, but you don't want to get too close, don't speak two inches from my mouth, don't kiss me, don't hug me, and then you want to wear this. But again, this is not that we want everybody to wear something, but if this may help you, it may help somebody that has been doing church online for a long time and feels uncomfortable coming to church because people in church here are crazy and they talk to me and they hug me and this other lady almost kissed me that day and I'm afraid and so you just want to do this so if you want to you can do this if you don't want to dismiss the whole idea we had a great time in Mexico and don't forget this Sunday today we have our annual business meeting you want to come is potluck annual business meeting once a year we get together we hear a little bit about the ministry what god is doing in our church and you can take a paper and ask all the questions about all the finances i know that many 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 of you guys give your tithe and your offering and you want to know where every penny goes come to this annual business meeting if you are not a member you want to come today become a member we're going to have membership applications you can put your name as a member there and you want to come potluck annual business meeting if you don't want to cook go buy chicken or pizza if you don't want to buy chicken or pizza or whatever you want to buy come anyways because we want to have a good time it's it's we we do this we have to do it and it's important that you come because we want to have transparency in our finances let's go to the bible today in the book of john chapter 16 verse 33 i am uh, very excited i i was excited to preach the first service and i'm excited the same to preach in the second service you know we're going to talk about something that i hope can help everybody in this place this is a cross-generation sermon this is not a, a sermon that is only going to benefit if you're young or older because we're going to look in the Bible a little bit. We're going to see that if we are young or old or super old, or if you want to walk with Jesus forever, there is an amazing thing. There is an amazing blessings of walking with the Lord every day, every week, every decision with these two things. I'm going to trust in God for everything in my life, and I'm going to obey the word of God. If you can bring these two things down strongly in your life, you are a winner. You're going to be a champion. You're going to overcome things and you're going to see things do amazing things in your life. So say with me, trust in God for everything and obey God in everything. The Bible says here, in John 16, verse 33, these things, Jesus says, I have spoken to you that in me, not in money, not in the government, not in nothing else, in me, you may have peace. In me, you may have peace, Jesus says. In the world, you will, in the world, no matter who you are, even Jesus 
had tribulation. But be of good cheer. I, Jesus says, I have overcome the world. There is nothing you can go through in this world, in this life, that I am not bigger and more powerful to change that reality in your life, in your relationship, in your mind, in your heart, whatever it is. Let's pray. Father, we ask you today that your word will seek in strongly. That we will understand, God, that if we will have tribulations, but if we live a life trusting and obeying and walking with you every day, we will enjoy a peace and strength that only you can give us to go through the hardest things in life. And Lord, in a very special way today, we ask you for President Putin. We believe that you can change the heart of this man. God, we ask you right now, and I invite you to join me to pray for the Ukrainian people. Father God, we ask you this morning... Because we believe that the great majority of that nation, if not every one of them, wants to live in an independent, freedom nation. We ask you for the Ukrainian, Father God, for the family members, for ladies and men who are volunteering and going and fighting the, the, the invasion and this injustice done by the, by the president and the Russians, Lord. But we believe that you can change the heart of this man. We believe that you can use nations. We believe that you can use whatever you want. We don't know how you're going to change, but we believe, God, that you can make a miracle in this situation in Ukraine. Father God, and we ask you with all our hearts right now for a miracle that this war, this invasion will stop soon, Father God, and less people will die, innocent people, God, for the hunger of power and whatever is going on in the heart of President Putin. Father, we, we, we pray with respect, even if we don't, it's hard to have respect for this man, but you can change his heart, God. You can use nations. You can do whatever you want to do, but we ask you for Ukraine. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Keep praying for them. You don't want to be in their shoes. Amen. It is a very bad thing. But let's go into the word today. The title of the message is, We have an everlasting God in momentary storms. Everlasting. The same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The same power, the same love that he had for the people in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and today has not changed. You and I probably went through things in our lives who were storm. How many of you guys went through a storm in your life that you thought this storm is never going to end? This storm is never going to end, but God got you out of that storm. Can I see your hands? God got you out of that storm. Yes. The devil told you, you're never going to get over this mentally, emotionally, with your kids, whatever it is. That's what I title, uh, everlasting, eternal, all-knowing, all-power, everywhere. God, you have in your life, when you go through storms, who are not forever. Jesus said in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you, that in the government, uh -uh, that by the love and the faithfulness and the kindness of everybody around you who loves you, uh -uh, by the man money you have sitting in the bank, no, by your job, no, by your wisdom, your title, your relationship, no. The Bible says, and this is where we messed up, we struggle because so many times we let somebody else or something else become so big in our lives. And the devil has a big old party in there. And Jesus says, you're struggling for lack of peace because you are not looking to me. You're looking to something else in your life. In me. In who? In me, Jesus says. You may have peace. Why may? Because some Christians don't <laughs> seek him. In him, in the world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. 
I have overcome the world. Nothing that you will go through in life, God is going to say, I have fixed a lot of people's problems, but this one is a new one that I have never dealt before. I don't think I can do something here. There is nothing in this world, in this life, that he has not overcome. The Bible says that after Jesus died, and he said even before that, he said, all power and authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So the first point of my message today is we will go through trials and tribulations in this life. Jesus said it in this world. You will have. Look to somebody next to you and tell them, you will, we will go, we all will go through, every one of them, every one of us, we will all go through trials and tribulations. How many of you guys know that's the truth? Eh? We will all go. The older I get, the more I like to play in my mind with this the single people. They think they have it harder, and I see where they struggle. <laughs> and some of them, they get married, and now they have the struggle of being married. Have you seen that? <laughs> and the ones who don't have kids, they want to have kids, and they are so jealous of the one who have kids. And then they may have kids, and now they have kids. And <gasps> how am I going to fix this in my life? <laughs> the young people struggle in some areas. The older people struggle in other areas. In this world, you will have tribulation. We're going to look a little bit in Isaiah chapter 25 and 24. So go into your Bible if you brought your Bible. If you didn't bring your Bible, I invite you to bring your Bible or bring your phone, open your Bible and your phone, whatever you want to do. I love it. I love when I see people opening the Bible somehow. Isaiah 25, 4. In verse 1, Isaiah, we're going to see in a moment, he talks about how great God is. And then in verse 4, he says, you, God, for you have been what? A strength to the poor. Wait, shouldn't it say abundance? Because the poor needs something. But it says a strength to the poor. We will go through things in life that we feel so poor in our heart, in our mind, in our emotions, in our character. And what we need is the strength of God to go one more day, one more hour. He will walk with us through the valley of shadow of death. See, you and me, sometimes all we want is God to get us out of the valley instantly. Wouldn't that be cool? You get into the valley and two minutes later you say, God, get me out of this valley. Boom, God gets you out of the valley. But it doesn't say that. He says he's going to be a strength. He's going to walk with us through the valley. He's going to be a strength to the needy in Distress, the needy in distress. Anybody here has experienced what distress or anxiety is? You go bananas thinking, yeah? I learned this many years ago. Be very careful, Christian, what you start thinking in the middle of the night. Something about the middle of the night in our thinking. Have you experienced that? Something really weird. Something really weird. You go crazy thinking and you go and you are just, uh, anxiety and fear takes over you. And you're not thinking in what God can do. You're not trusting in the Lord in that moment. You just go bananas because the devil is trying to convince you that he's going to make a huge mess. Another place where I find that the enemy attacks my mind is when I go to pray. Something about that. Most of the time, I go to pray, 
Boom, my mind gets so crazy. About, I forgot this. I have to fix it. I didn't set this. I didn't, I didn't do that. I have to do this. I have to fix it. What is going to happen here? And it's so typical that I just know. And most of the time, I get it right away. A few seconds into this thing, I say, what are you doing? You have peace all day long, all night long. The moment you're going to pray, you go bananas in your head. This is, has to be the devil. Amen. Has to be. Be careful. The enemy tries to make a huge atomic bomb out of nothing. A refuge from the storm. We lose our job. We lose our loved ones. A divorce. You're single, you want to get married. Then something happens, you have kids. And now, your kids grow a little older than five, and they start making decisions that you think are very foolish. Have you ever been in that place? It's a scary place. They start hanging out with people that you say, oh, no, this is dangerous, but I cannot control everything in my life, in his life. So we get distressed. We make relationships in our lives who go crazy. Mental distress, financial distress. You feel poor of faith, poor of patience. You love the people in your family and things are not working out for them. They marry maybe the wrong person. They're hanging out with the wrong person. They want to marry, but they don't get married. The other ones who maybe marry, marry to a jerk or they have a kid who is just going crazy. There is so many things in life that we will go through that you have no power over it. More than just Bending your knee before God and say, God, please do a miracle. Wouldn't you want to stop the invasion in Ukraine? Wouldn't you want to do that two days ago already? How many of you guys would like to have the power to stop that? Well, we have the biggest power in our life. We have to pray for them. We got to pray. But it's no difference of the things you go through in life. Injustice. The storm. The heat. Needy and distressed, the poor. Then it says on the end, for the blast of the terrible ones is a storm against the wall. Now, this wall in this scripture is not an indoor wall. I know because in Spanish it says muralla. In English, you have a wall, any wall is a wall. Even a wall that protects a city is still a W-A-L-L. -L. But in Spanish, it's muralla. In the original, this is a wall out there in the middle of nowhere. And the storm are hitting it right and left. A muralla, a muro, you know Spanish a little bit? That's not an indoor. That's a, a something out there in the middle of nowhere a protecting something. Have you seen those images, those pictures, where there is a wall in the middle of the field and the storm and the sun and everything is hitting it? And that's how I f we feel sometimes. We are alone out there and everything is hitting us. We are misunderstood. I don't know about you, but I marry a woman who doesn't think like me. Maybe you didn't do that mistake. No, I didn't do a mistake. That's how just it works. I mean, how many of you guys identify with me? You marry somebody who doesn't think like you. Katie grew up with a mom and a dad, and one of the greatest things they used to do is rescue stray dogs and cats. That's Katie right there. That's not Katie, but that's the heart of Katie. <laughs> Two days ago, I discovered that under my shed in the backyard, there is a big old mama cat with a lot of kittens living. I remember I grew up in Argentina where God made the birds to be in the sky and the fishes in the water and every all the other creatures should be in the trees or running in the fields, not inside of my house. So we had two conversations already, and I know what it is to be the wall and the heat of the sun. No, it didn't get bad. 
But for me, it's like, Google how to build an atomic bomb and blow the shit, you know, with all the animals on the bar. I'm thinking, I know, I know, it feels, no, I'm not gonna do that, don't worry, I mean, I'm not gonna explode, I'm not gonna kill anybody. But I'm thinking, man, if I start digging really deep and I start putting so they don't live on, no, you're gonna destroy the house of these amazing animals. I didn't grow up where the dog sniffs on your plate when you sit in front of the TV and you put your plate and the dog is three inches from your plate sniffing on the floor. I didn't grow up like that. You know, that is ungodly, I would say. I don't know. <laughs> so here we are. The doggy door in the garage. Full of food and water for the dog. The dog sleeps all night long in Liam's bedroom. This cat is so fat because she's eating all my dog food. I am buying a Walmart food for this animal to live back there. And how many more are they going to have? And so it's just crazy. My mind is going crazy. So what I'm saying is you get into relationships with people who think so different than you. Katie okay, was working yesterday and said, did you know what I see? And I'm just like mad. And she said, send me a picture of the cats. I said, what? <laughs> Dead or alive? You want to be or after? <laughs> so we're all going to go through trials and tribulations. This, the cat, is just kind of more like a joke. We'll deal somehow with it. But there are some real storms in life. So what do we do? God says he's going to be our strength. My first point is trust in God. And my second point is trust and obey God always. Look at the person next to you and tell them that. Trust and obey God always. You will go through storms. You will go through craziness. Isaiah 25, 1, before he talks about the storms and the heat and all that stuff, Isaiah 25, three verses before, he says, Oh, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. You are my God. I went through storm. I went through the heat. I know what I'm talking about, Isaiah said. I went, I feel like that wall alone in the storm. I wasn't needy. I was in distress. I had anxiety. I had all this stuff. But I'm going to exalt you, God, for you have done wonderful things in my life. How many in this room can say, God has done wonderful things in my life? He has done. He has done. He has done. He has done. He has done it. I was talking with somebody at the end of first service at Pastor, it's not me bringing the clients. I have a company. It's not bringing, it's God. I started go, coming to church for a month, and I have more work than I have. Remember how much work God is blessing me, and God is helping me. God is restoring so many things in my heart. And we can say, God has done amazing things in my life. When I let him do it, and I said, all I'm going to do, I'm going to trust God. And with every decision I'm going to do, I'm going to check. Is this pleasing God, or is this not pleasing God? Oh, it's not pleasing God. I'll do this. That's all you have to do. You don't need to fix your problems. You need to trust in God Almighty and do what He says that we have to do. The life that we have to live. Amen. You got to lie? Don't lie. You don't have to lie. You want to lie because it sounds like a good idea. Keep doing what God tells you to do. You have done wonderful things. And then He says, your counsels of old are what? Faithfulness and truth. Isaiah says, my pa and my grandpa and grandpa and generations and hundreds and thousands of years, I see the man and the woman who walk with God. And they trusted in the word of God. That's what I'm saying. This is a generational sermon. If you're five of you, 50 of you, 100 years old, you can look in your life and you say, the longest I keep trusting in God and obeying and walking with him, he's going to take care of business in my life. He will take care of business. Now, if you can work and you don't want to work, 
Well, then I have another sermon for you that I don't have time to preach right now. But the longest, you're okay working and being obedient and trusting in God. My ancestors, old, councils of old. Isaiah says, I read in the Bible, in the scripture, what people, men and women, knew hundreds and thousands of years ago. And those things have not changed. God is the same. And if we obey his word, it's going to work out. His word is the truth. He says here in verse 1, I will exalt you, God, because you are wonderful. And you say that I can trust in your word. And listen, you not only can trust in God's word, but you can trust in God's heart. Are you in a relationship or do you work with somebody that you cannot trust in their heart because you've seen what they have done before? You know what I'm talking about? It's hard to trust. The Bible says, curse is the man who trusts in a man. But you can trust in the heart of God. So even, even when you're going through those trials and tribulations, you can say, Lord, I've been walking with you 10, 15, 20, 30 years. You have never allowed anything in my life that I was just to produce pain. If I produce pain, I know that the blessing after that was bigger than the trial that I had to go through to change something in my life. We want everything to go hunky-dory. At the same time, we struggle with sin and say, God, change me. Well, those things don't go together. You cannot become more like Jesus if everything goes perfect. You're like, how much do you change when everything is wonderful? It doesn't happen. We have to be put in the fire. I will trust your wonderful truth. Your wonderful truth. Isaiah 26, verse 2, the next verse says, Open the gates that the righteous nations, nation which keeps what? The what? The truth may enter in it. It doesn't say open the gates for all the liars to go through. It says what? Open the gates that the men, the nations, the people, they follow the truth of God. The word of God is the truth. Amen? This is the truth. Why can I say this? Because I have a father who is with the Lord for 24 years or so. And he believed in living the truth. When he was 18, his first or second job, whatever it was, he was a Christian. He gave his life to Jesus when he was 14. He was walking with the Lord. And he started to work in Argentina, Buenos Aires, in a factory that made huge rolls of material to make clothing. So there was an order of a certain color with a certain coat. And the factory didn't have at that moment that certain color. But they had another role who was very, very, very similar to this one. So his boss called my father to the office and said, Juan, I want you to ship this order. It's not exactly, but I want you to lie in the invoice going back to the order saying, we are sending you what you order. It's not exactly, but it's very, very close, Juan. So don't worry. And what did my dad say? Can do that. That's lying. I'm a Christian. You can fire me. I'm not going to lie. His boss got mad, didn't fire him, called another guy on the level of my dad and says, you going to lie? I'll lie for you. No worries. Boom. The job got done. But after a while, there was a huge conflict in the company in between a lot of workers. And a lot of people were lying. 
And the boss wanted to fix the problem and see who is saying the truth, who should be punished, and who is lying. And who's, if you run a company, you maybe know what I'm talking about when there's a lot of people involved in a big conflict and you don't know who is saying the truth, you know, and you have to act on it. So then my dad was called again into the boss office. He said, Juan, I know that you know everything that's going on out there. I want you to tell me what's going on. And I call you because I know that you're a Christian and you don't lie. The truth. Listen, my friends, when you start playing fishy and fishy and fishy and you keep playing fishy and fishy and fishy and fishy and slimy and fishy and fishy, but then you want the Lord to bless you. And give you all the prosperity and all the peace and all the strength that you need. I don't know if you guys know, but heaven is made out of cheese. Did you know that? My heaven, maybe. And we went to Mexico, like you know, last week. And in Mexico, they make the Mennonites this cheese. It's like about this round, this thick. It's amazing. The best cheese in the world, I think it is. Huge like that. When I sigh, I said, I want half of it. I really wanted the whole thing, but I said, I just want half of it. <laughs> pounds and pounds of cheese. I said, Hans, you're going to pay half of this, and you take half of the cheese. And I'm going to cut it, not you. I didn't say that. So we got the cheese, half of this huge thing, this thick cheese. $22 was the whole thing. I just pay 11 for half of it. I know some of you guys want to get out and go to Mexico right now. Don't do it. <laughs> but we are getting close to the border, and there is the sign. No animals or animal product. And I'm thinking, I know the cheese is made out of some kind of bean, you know. <laughs> no, but listen, I think the cheese is okay. I always tell. But it says that report all animal and animal product. I bought for Katie this little plant. There's a funny chicken made out of ceramics. It's the funniest thing in the world. And I'm thinking, okay, the guy on the border... If he asks me this, I can answer this way. He asks me this way, you say, the planter. People in the van already are hiding my big old piece of cheese. <laughs> because everybody saw the sign right there, and we are just about to get to the border. And I'm thinking, Lord, really? You don't want me to put five more pounds in my body out of quesadillas with this cheese? This is cheese, Lord, from Mexico. I don't get this stuff over there. You know what I'm thinking. How can I not have to report this? But I, my father's story keeps coming back. And I hear all kinds of voices in my head and in the van. And so we get there. And what do you got there, sir? But I got a planter, and it says no plants. A plant, he said, the guy, you know, the, the guys, they're serious people. A plant, no, 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 not a plant, a planter for the wife. I said, why did I say the wife? My wife, I shouldn't say, but I said the wife. <laughs> so a planter for the wife, huh? Yeah. Made of ceramic. You want me to show it to you, sir? I'm trying to be all nice. What else do you need to report? Well, we got cheese, I said. <laughs> <laughs> but listen. The Bible says you walk in truth. I have all my, four of my kids, Sophia, Hans, Angel, Liam, four or five of them, I don't know how many were in the van. Tito is there. I had to say the cheese. Because in my mind it's like integrity, hiding, lying, or not. Praise the Lord. He said, no problem with the cheese. Go across, sir. I said, thank you, Jesus. 
I was looking, imagining your wife was going to put five pounds with all this cheese in her body. And I was going to be Katie and me. But I didn't say that. But here it is. Don't worry about the storms. We all will go through trials and tribulations. Trust in the Lord and obey the Lord. Walk in the truth of the Lord. But what if I would be alone crossing the cheese and I didn't have to be a light and an example to all these church people? Wouldn't I take? You have to make the decision. I have to make the decision. Open the gates that the righteous nation will keep his truth and may enter in this. The third point, you can enjoy God's peace and strength for the rest of your days, but don't remember Verse 1 says, your counsels, your word, are faithfulness and truth. I'm going to tell you something. No matter how loud your mind and your heart is screaming at you, do the fishy thing. Do the slimy thing. Lie. Hide it. If you do what God says to do, you will have peace and you will have strength and you will have victory because I have seen this too many times. A little lie, and then it's easier to... What does the Bible say? If you are unfaithful in what? In the small things. You will also be what? Unfaithful in the big things. You can enjoy, verse 20, chapter 23, 6, verse 3 and 4 says, you will keep, this is Isaiah saying, you will keep what? In perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on what? On the cheese? No. On the cheating of the taxes? No. Whose mind stayed on you because he trusted in Lose your cheese, but not your integrity. I'll say something that is even more stronger, very against this culture. Go back and live with your mom and stop living with that person that is not your wife or your husband. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Run from what is not godly. Because God says, I will keep in perfect peace whose mind I stayed in you. Because he trusted in you. Trust in the Lord for how long? Forever. I love that song because I listened to Hillsong a while ago in Australia. They say, forever. And so I like, I remember that. Because trust in the Lord, the Bible says, for how long? Forever. Every situation, every decision, with the kids, with your finances, with everything in your life, with your shopping, with your business, with everything, the perfect peace would, would be with those who stayed uh, their mind on God because they trusted in you, trust in the Lord forever. For in Jehovah, the Lord is everlasting strength. Everlasting strength. A thousand years ago, the ones who trusted in God and obeyed, they had strength and they had peace. Two thousand years ago, three thousand years ago, three thousand years from now, if Jesus is there is to come. Those who know that they're going to have trials and tribulation, but they're going to say, I'm going to live what the Bible says, and whatever happened, I am going to trust in God. They will have perfect peace. Perfect. How many of you peace gets interrupted more than once a week? Let me see your hands. More than once a week. Why? Because in the world you will have tribulation. You want to fix that? Put your eyes on Jesus and say, God, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. If I'm supposed to work, I'm going to work. If I'm supposed to say something, I'm going to say something. If I'm not supposed to say something, I'm not going to say did you know how many times the devil used me to steal the peace in my home 
Because the Bible says, the truth of God says that we have to be what? Slow to speak. Slow to speak. Fast to listen. Anybody identifies with me here? There was no obedience to the word. I got mad. I'll say whatever I want to say. The peace is gone. Is it God's fault? No. Is the Holy Spirit's fault? No. Is the Bible fault? Is the pastor fault? Is the church fault? Is not. It's our decision. You and me are just one decision from foolishness. One decision from foolishness. One decision from losing the peace of God. Imagine this story. I hide the cheese. I didn't say anything about the cheese. You know what was going to happen? 99% I would have to repent personally to Tito, to Sophia, to Liam. To Hans, to Angel. And I would have to say, I ask you to forgive me. I hope I can erase this story from your mind, but you're always going to remember that you had a father or a father in law or a pastor who is a liar. Are you following me here? I'm serious, my friends. You can go to another church. You want to enjoy the peace of God. I can say I have repented. I hope I never do it again. And they will forgive me. But they will always remember. When this guy was in a tight place, he sold his integrity over $11 of Mexican cheese. It sounds funny. It's not funny. How many fathers that we have in the room? How many mothers we have in the room? It's hard to come to this church, Pastor. You want me to be perfect? No. I'm not perfect. What I'm saying is God will give you strength and peace if you trust in Him and you obey His Word. Would you close your eyes right there where you are this morning? Maybe you feel condemnation right now. You feel like you're the worst. That's not the Holy Spirit talking to you. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, He will say, Repent, come closer to me. Go and sin no more. Change in this area. We all struggle. But the Lord wants us to enjoy our abundant life. We are responsible. To live a godly life before our church people, our workers, our spouses. Our kids. I know how this works. The next time I go with Katie and she sees that sign, she's going to ask me, Hey, you brought all that cheese last time. How did that happen? Well, you know, honey, a big jacket hiding the cheese. Lord, we ask you this morning that you would help us to see what your word says. You will have tribulations. You will go through all kinds of craziness. But I want to use you. I want to transform you, Christian. I want to do great things with your life. I want to give you my peace. I want to give you my strength. I want to give you all that I have for you. You go through crazy fear and anxiety and you make foolish decisions because you're not listening to my word. Maybe in fact you're not even spending every day time in my word so you don't even know what to do. But today I say, God, I want to walk with you. I want to walk with integrity. If the Lord has spoken to your life, I know that the time has been gone and I'm sorry for preaching so long I really I am 
But if you want to be a man or woman of integrity, would you stand right there where you are? And I want to pray with you. You really want to be a man and a woman of integrity. 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 You want to enjoy the peace and the strength that God only gives those that walk in truth. Father, you see so many standing up this morning in this place. We all struggle with this, Lord. I knew I struggled a few days ago in Davan. I was struggling, God. My mind was telling me all kinds of excuses, all kinds of ways to hide, all kinds of ways to make it sound like it was not going to be a bad thing that I am doing, Lord. But we know that we know that we know that in the midst of trials and tribulation of this life, if your word says, if I trust in you and I obey your word, strength and peace will be abundance in my heart. Lord, and there is people in this room who came to this room with no peace. Lord, guide them where did they have to make a decision in a godly way and they will have peace again. Maybe it is to go home and confess something. Maybe it is to repent. Maybe it is to ask for forgiveness from God and from that person that they did wrong. Lord, but I, I want to have workers in this church, mom and dads who don't lie. Lord, it would be so great that every businessman in this place will decide to be transparent and honest and have integrity in the business level because that's when the blessings are going to come more than ever before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.